What's up, everybody? Welcome to the IOP family. I am your host, Moni Moni, with a brand new episode. Welcome to the beginning, and don't forget to stay. We are going to get inspired and breathe in the true meaning of what it takes to create opulence in our lives. On today's episode, I have an amazing guest and a great friend of mine, fifth generation shaman and spiritual coach, Mimi E, who is here to talk about magical mess her spiritual development practice where she shares and supports women in finding the self-confidence to follow their spiritual gifts hello hello how are you i am great girl how are you hello 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 iop family i'm happy to be here we are so excited to have you, Mimi. So I want the audience to get a chance to get to know you. So tell us a little bit about who Mimi is. You know, I feel like that's a question that I'm always asking myself all the time. Um, as you said, I'm a fifth generation shaman. Um, I've been I've been doing healing work and spiritual work, what feels like all my life, but I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. Um, and and like I come from a corporate background. I was working in corporate. For so many years, like everybody else, I heard the same thing. Go to school, get a good education, get a good job. Right. I did all of that, climbed up the corporate ladder, and, and reached a point where I was just stuck. When I say stuck, girl, I, I used to be in my car crying, dreading going into the office. And there was nothing I can say on the surface that I was experiencing that was bad at the office. It was like my spirit didn't want to go into the office. It kept saying no. So I would wow. literally... I would literally drive to the office and sit outside for like maybe an hour before having to start and just taking deep breaths. And I could not understand what was going on because it felt like a tussle, it felt like a struggle. Like I was struggling with my right. inner self. And back then I didn't know anything about my inner self. That was that was over like 13 years ago. I didn't know anything about my inner self, my spiritual self. I didn't know anything about that. I just felt like there was something on the inside that was telling me, I don't want to go here. I don't want to go here. <laughs> and I was just like, but this is how we take care of ourselves. I have I have a home to pay for. I have a car to pay for. I have right. things that, that are in my life in which I need to pay for. And so, um, and so I was just like, okay. And like, I didn't have a way out. So I just stayed. And, and I kid you not, I remember sitting in my car and saying, God, if you give me a way out, I'm going to leave. If you give me a way out of this, I'm going to leave. And and I always tell people, be careful when you say that, because that's when shit get real. Yes, that's, that's when, when universe really listens. Life, <laughs> yes, that's when life gets upside down. And 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 I said that, and like literally two weeks later, less than two weeks later, um, I walked into the office, and they asked me to come into the office, my managers and stuff, and they laid me off. And at the time, I couldn't understand <laughs> why I was getting laid off, my brain couldn't understand it because I was the only person who was producing at the company. I was bringing in $60 million in new accounts every um, every, every year. And so oh I was like, God. why am I getting laid off and not everybody else? Right, but, like, why me? Girl, uh, but I, like, now I realize that was God answering my prayer. But at the time, it felt like I was singled out. You, you know what I mean? It felt like rejection. Yeah. And so it took a while. And so it, it took a while to just begin to decide like, all right, I asked for this. I asked for this and what's next? And it was a lot of ups and downs and unraveling of who, my identity. Because when you, when you climb this corporate ladder, when you do the things that they told you you have to do, a part of you begins to feel like this is who I am. So I, I took the time to realize who am I when I'm not at the job? Who am I right. when, um, when, when I'm not working? Like, who is this person? Because to be honest, I hadn't spent enough time with myself. I didn't even know that was a thing. I hadn't spent enough time with myself to really sit down and be like, okay, I'm this person. And so is that, go ahead. is that, I'm so sorry. No, is that ahead. what truly pushed you to embark on this new journey? Like, was that your aha moment? Like, man, the, I, I know there's something I have to do. I have to go seeking for it. I have to find it. I have to put my finger on it. You know, is that what truly you feel like is the first step that you had to take was, you know, see yourself in the mirror and be like, okay, what am I going to do? What is, what is my calling? What is pushing me? 100%. And what's driving me? 100%. Yeah. Had, had the job not laid me off, I would not have had the free time 
to sit down and think about what what's the life I want to create. Most times we we are running from from the job to home to to um to daycare after school all these things that right. that we never get a quiet moment to just sit down and say what is it that I want. And so during during the time in which I was laid off. I had nothing but time now. I cried a lot, obviously. I cried a lot. I, I just, I let out so much stuff, but. I think that's what we do. I think that's our body detoxing. Yeah, 100%. And so, and so within that time, I remember saying, okay, I have nothing but time now. So what is it? What am I being called to do? Like, what is this purpose? I feel like there's something more. And I just, and I was like, I'm willing to do it. And um and at that time the movie Eat Pray Love was out, and so and so I, I remember saying okay I, I remember watching the movie and being so inspired by by Elizabeth Gilbert's journey and saying mm-hmm. one day I'm gonna do that I'm going to step out and figure out what is it that I like but by traveling and and, and just just doing things that are different and it, and so mm-hmm. that was that was immediately after I was laid off. And, and wow. so it took, it took a while, but it wound up happening. I wound up going, to, going to Indonesia. I wound up living there for a while. I wound up just traveling and creating a lifestyle that supported who I was becoming that left behind that old identity and was stepping and in, emerging into who I knew I truly was. I think that's something I think we all go through, you know, especially with, what we feel like quote unquote could be a tower moment in our lives is really a blessing in disguise. And a lot of times we, you know, we can sit here and write manifestations out and then universe has a way of like, okay, if this is truly something you want, let me show you what you have to get rid of in order for you to really see the path that I'm, you know, walking you through or guiding you through. And I think a lot of people take that as an, Oh my God, my world is crashing down. The world may be crashing down, but that's because you have to rebuild your foundation. And I think that's the important lesson in that. Um, And and I do have another question. Do you have an online live stream for people that are not in your area? Live stream? Like like a podcast or something? Yeah, like a podcast or do you go live or, you know. As as of right now, um, as of right now, I'm loving TikTok. Like I, I started, I started really engaging with followers over the last couple of weeks. And so I'm loving it. I go live there at least once a week and just like talking about topics just like this. And, um, and, and so, so after I do those lives, I'll post them to, to my YouTube. So, so, so a TikTok, I'm Oracle Mimi and, and it's, it's spelled exactly as it sounds. And, um, yeah, I feel like these are the conversations I want to continue to have. These are the conversations I believe people in our communities need to be having because as you oh, said yes. as you said that was a tower moment but envision somebody who knows nothing about tower moments who knows nothing about about like like going through these cycles whose parents like was whose parents were immigrants and all they wanted to do was come here and strive and i felt like i did a lot more than they did and so they couldn't necessarily give me support to say Okay, girl, you are looking to switch some, switch your your interests, the things you're excited about. You're looking to change that, and so and so they couldn't they couldn't do that for me. So I found myself searching and searching and searching for what felt good. And I think that if, if anything, that's the message I want to give people that you have to sometimes you got to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. Yes, you have to. And get I think that's important. Uncomfortable, and when you're uncomfortable, oh, it's hella uncomfortable. I would never glorify that and say, and say, oh no, you know, it's not that bad. No, it's worse. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's worse. No, it's exactly. Just it's worse. <laughs> because, because you, because you're in a position that you've never been in, in your life. You know, yes. you've never been in this position because your old identity is literally breaking down. That's why they call it a tower moment because all the old foundations and structures you had in your life are breaking down. So you are left to confront your inner child self, yourself that is like, how do, how do mm. I handle this? And that yes. self has to start rebuilding now off of it, off of the new things you believe, the, the new foundations. And that can be a process because some people go their entire lives and never do it. And so that's why I tell people, I do not discount those moments, those experiences, because they're really real. Yes. 
No, and I think it comes into play with like a lot of us tend to want to break generational cycles, you know, and I think that's where another tower moment happens and just, you know, we're raised a certain way and we think that life is a certain way. And then when we have the opportunity to truly make a difference for ourselves or generations, you know, we kind of look back on like what everyone else has done in the past, what hasn't been working. And then sometimes it's even gotten down to the point where like you have to face things you don't want to face or have your whole entire family face things they didn't want to face or talk about, you know, and breaking that generational cycle. But then it's like, as soon as you break it, what's the next step? Because a lot of people just stop there. You know, they stop there and they say, oh, okay, I did this. I'm going to wash my hands and that's it. But it's like, no, then what do you do after you have this big moment, you know, this breakthrough? It, and that's what it truly is. It's a breakthrough. Yeah. So what can you tell those people who are having a breakthrough moment? Like, what is the next step for them? What, what do you advise for them? First, first of all, if you're having a breakthrough moment, I encourage you to really just sit with yourself and and just really own this time. Because sometimes we're just moving from one thing to the next and we're just trying to get past this so that we can get to the nice part, right? Just right. really sit in this moment. Feel the feelings of this moment and really own that. Next thing, next thing I would encourage people is to Begin working with somebody who can support you. Me, me, um, I told you guys know I'm a spiritual coach. And so I really help people to to begin to take their take the things in which they that's coming up for them throughout their awakening, their intuitive gifts, their their intuitive ideas, like the things in which is being asked for them to birth. I help them take that accompanied with their physical gifts. So if somebody's an artist, um, to take taking their gift of intuition, insight. Or like, um, or, or or like being able to be perceptive, and including that in their art, in, in their artistry, so, so that they are they're, they're creating art pieces that they intuitively feel, because that's what's going to help people connect to their work. And so, and so I help them to merge their spiritual gifts with their physical gifts in order to really step into their calling. And so, and so, for, so for anyone else, I would encourage them to. Seek out what your calling is. Because in this life, you're not going to be happy or have true joy emanating from the core of your being until you're operating in your calling. Until then, you, you're kind of just searching around, searching around, trying to figure right, it out. Just looking and trying to figure it out. Yeah. And I'm grateful that I had many teachers in my lifetime who kind of supported me along this journey. But all of that happened after I got laid off from the job and I never went back to corporate since. And that's been that's right. 13 years. Yeah. <laughs> look at universe work. Huh? Dude, look at universe just working its way. Like, you know, that that's one thing. A lot of people may be like, oh my God, another universal talk. But the reality is like universe speaks and universe aligns things. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes we don't understand why. Yeah. But it's because I think there was a saying that I once heard of Don't try to understand why, just have faith and jump, take that leap of faith. And sometimes if you go in it blindly, you won't overcrowd your mind with how it should be. Yeah. You're just going to accept the way things are. And I think that's more acceptable, you know, or, you know, that's just our selves being like, okay, I'm going to lose a little bit of control. So that way I can gain control. It's like almost when you're in a car, you know, your car is spinning out. Sometimes they say you got to go with, turn the wheel towards whatever, the way it's going, the car is spinning, you know, Mm -hmm. like that you can regain control. And I think that's what a lot of people need to remember is that sometimes you have to just breathe, turn that wheel and follow, follow it. Yes. Yes, I, yes. I, it's, it's absolutely true because your calling is always with you. Your purpose is always with you. It never leaves you. It never leaves right. you. Life may be upside down, but in, but we've been sold a false idea that we are in control of our lives and we're not. Or whatever. We, we have control of aspects of our lives. If we're going to get up and go to work that day, we're going to brush our teeth, we're going to get on the road. But the moment right. you step out of your house, you lose 99% of the controlling which you had. Because in your house, you can control the environment. But the moment you step out, you are you are including other people into your world. 
And so, and so wherever that's the case, anything can always happen. And so your calling is always there. It's always speaking to you. It speaks to you in dreams and visions. It speaks to you through movies, through books. You, you'll, you, you'll read a part of a book. You I always heard through the ringing of ears too. Yes. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's when someone's the, talking bad about you. I think it's the writer. The <laughs> right? Yes. Through the ringing of ears, through animals, through animals. Sometimes you could just be um, on your couch and look out the window and this bird is looking at you and you, you're like, what is this bird? It's because it, it's the moment is so rich and intense. You feel like, no, I need to look up what this bird is and, and whatever. And, and, and when you look it up online, it's like, Yes, this bird means hope and inspiration and this. So your calling is always a family like member. That too. <laughs> They're always. I was always told red cardinals means family member. Yes. Means yep, and, and ancestors, ancestors. Like I'm telling you, anytime oh, yes. I was in any challenging moment in my life, I always found support through insects, through through animals. They would literally like chase me down to to like give me a message. I just be like, through, 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 just, just like minding my business. All of a sudden, a swarm of bees, like five bees, would just come start dancing in my face. I'm like, girl, if, I'm like, is this a movie? Like, what is happening here? No, I think it's crazy because I've actually, butterflies have been incorporated in my uh, spiritual awakening moments. Yeah. Um, you know, they're kind of like confirmations for yeah. me. I usually always see a yellow butterfly. Now, if there's a black butterfly, it's because I need confirmation from, you know, the universe. And it's like a serious moment yeah. of truth that I'm trying to get to. Mm -hmm. But like yellow butterflies have always been a thing for me. And it's always, um, I always feel like it's just like, hey, it's okay. You know, because usually something happens before then and I'm just like either overwhelmed or overstimulated yeah. sometimes. And all of a sudden I look outside and it's like about to be winter time mm -hmm. or fall time and there's a yellow butterfly, you know, and I'm like, well, did they all migrate? But then mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, universe, I hear yes, you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I hear that you have a project, of course, which is Magical Mess. Yeah. What are some of the things you want the listeners to know about Magical Mess? Like, what should they consider if they're looking to pursue that journey? Okay. Um, what are, What can you really tell us about what you are currently teaching? Beautiful. I love the work in which I do. I truly do. Like, helping people to connect to their confidence so that they can follow their purpose is my purpose. You, you, you know what I mean? I feel like yes. I went my entire life to avoiding my purpose as much as I could. Because in my mind, I had already settled that I was going to be the big time CEO of this company. So I had confidence in all those areas. Whereas when it came to my spiritual path, my spiritual work, I had no confidence. So I literally went on Jonah's mm -hmm. journey of finding my own confidence in, in myself, in this path, in order to... In order, in order to be able to support other people on this. And so in, in terms of magical mess, um, um, anyone anyone who feels called into the path of shamanhood, who is looking to like be, be birth, birth their shamanhood as a shaman, as a spiritual teacher, someone, someone who is looking to step out in their community in that way, amazing or whatever. I offer that. But as of right yeah. now, this is for all the newbies, anyone who is just starting out on their journey, on their spiritual journey, their spiritual awakening journey, and just want support, want to be around women who, who get it, who, who, does, who don't know everything about this healing thing, who are just trying to fall, fall back in love with themselves because because everything around them made them feel as if that they needed to qualify to love, so love to be loved. And so, um, right. and, and so... And, and, and so for that, all of my newbies, I have an amazing retreat coming up in Aruba. It's, it's the Aruba Self-Love. Yes, it's the Aruba Self-Love Retreat. And this retreat is for anyone who is looking to step out into their love. Anyone who is looking to take back their power from those places, those relationships, those jobs, yes. those institutions, anywhere in which they left their power and they're ready to take it back. This this is what this is what this retreat is for. It's for, it's for people who are just ready to shine and and like and like just want support because I I fundamentally believe that how when you connect to your joy, 
you connect mm -hmm. um, you connect to the parts of you that this reminds you of your kid like self the part you, the parts of you who didn't care if anyone liked you or, or, or wanted to be around you the parts of parts of you who just truly loved being your weird quirk, quirky amazing self and so this is what this retreat is going to be. It's, it's going to be a fun time. You're going to be in Aruba for for four four nights, um, four nights and three days, three days and four nights, something like that. <laughs> but um, it's, it's happening from March 23rd to March 27th. And yeah, if you're looking to to really begin begin your healing journey with support with, with a tribe of, of women who are also doing the same things, learning learning different different spiritual techniques, rituals, and ceremonies, in, um, in, in which in which you, you can do to connect with yourself, love on yourself, as well as connect with your ancestors, connect with your spiritual team. Come out. Um, you, you can apply at magicalmess.co. Yes, and that's right. You heard it here first, initiating opulence at its finest, because that's what it is. You're initiating the opulence within yourself. You know, opulence means great wealth. Well, great wealth in mind, health, spirituality, yep. emotions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if it is someone, let's say for the person who, you know, is in their tower moment you know this is a time for you to be able to join on board to aruba and really give yourself the time and the space to be able to love yourself and find yourself you know mm -hmm. even though you may be going through this moment and you you know maybe that's where you need to seek you yeah. need to seek answers within yourself and i think it's beautiful that mimi has this amazing retreat going to happen and you know i think it's beautiful that you are extending your hand out you know and doing and fulfilling your own purpose yeah. i mean i'm very happy for you thank i'm excited you, yeah. you, you know i think it's one of the greatest things you know um for you to be able to extend your arm and be like hey i'm here for you yeah. you know and that, that's so beautiful it's beautiful Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for saying that because sometimes people feel that when they're going through their tower moments, it's not a time to to do something different. To me, that that's the time that you jump out of the tower and land and land somewhere else that's safe for you at the time because it was during the tower moments that I made the big leaps in my life. And and so and so and so as you said, anyone experiencing those tower moments, those big life shifts, and you're like, I don't know what to do next. Do not listen to your mind. Listen to your heart and and and, and say, okay, this feels good. I'm gonna jump out into this. And so um and, and so if you if you are interested in the retreat, apply magicalmess.co. Um, even if you just want to go relax, just go ahead. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too, right. girl. <laughs> I love it. So Mimi, tell everyone where they can find you. Okay. Well, well, um, obviously on my website, magicalmess.co, as well as as well as on TikTok at Oracle Mimi and on Instagram at Oracle.mimi. So on Instagram it has a dot in between. And and yeah, you, you could reach out to me on on like any one of those platforms. Watch my videos. I share a lot of information about about your spiritual calling, how you know you're being called, and all these things. You should be able to identify um, some of these works for yourself. And yeah, you can book any one of my sessions and stuff on there. Yes, and of course, we all know that all the links will be in the description box below. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Mimi, so much for joining the show and sharing your wisdom and spreading, you know, your, the opulence and helping those people grow into and blossom into who they are meant to be. You know, it is a process and sometimes it can be scary. It can be scary to take that next step. It can be scary to mm -hmm. look at yourself in the mirror and be like, who am I or having to see yourself and then re fall in love with yourself because yeah. I think we fall in love with the idea of people liking us yeah. instead of us liking ourselves. So, you know, you offering this retreat and, you know, having people want to be there and want to be there for themselves, you know, is such a beautiful thing. And, you know, I thank you for even trusting my platform to come on and, you know, um, promote your business with us because we need more people like you in this world. And I want to thank you for that. And, you know, the same way you pour into people's cup, I hope people or souls pour back into yours and your life is filled with abundance and wisdom always. 
<laughs> hey, Ashe, I receive it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Moni Moni. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, this is this is the work. And and at times it's not always clouds and rainbows, but when you know you're doing something that you're called to do, it feeds your soul in a way that nothing else can. So I want to thank you for yeah. having me here. I want to thank you for sharing sharing um, my wisdom on this platform and just knowing that, girl, it's like, like I feel like we are all connected. And so we so, are wherever we're going. I know that there's an amazing path ahead for each and every one of us so thank you thank yes you. and i can't wait to have you more on the show as well yeah you know on more featuring episodes you know i can't wait to see what more we have in store and this is just the beginning just that's the right. beginning 2023 girl we got a whole yes do amazing things that's right mm -hmm. and for my iop family thank you for listening don't forget to subscribe on all of our platforms hasta la próxima ciao for now. Bye. <laughs>